All right, this is Central Valley Business for the one o'clock hour on this Thursday. It's March the 31st, final day of the third month of 2022. Welcome back. I'm Austin Reed. Hit me up on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Austin Reed on air. Hey, we are going to bring in our next guest now. Joining us live here in our Tower District studios today. Give it up for Greg Steen. Hello there, senior care advocates. Welcome back. Thank you. Good to be here again. We're talking about a kind of a rebrand for, for, True. for you, right? Yep. So what's yep. what's going on? What's the update since since we last talked a few months ago? Good question. So we're now Senior Care Advocates. We've changed our name. We uh, have been Steenie Company for many years, but and that's obviously my last name, but it doesn't really reflect what we do. You can be a plumber, electrician, anything, and those are all good things, but you need to tell people what you do. And so we did a pretty good study, and people told us that uh, we're advocates. We deal with seniors. And it's all about caring for them in a crisis. And so what we do, Austin, is we help people navigate the long-term care maze when they're in a crisis and hopefully do it without losing their life savings or their sanity. And so um, so we're excited about it. You know, we have a new website. We have, obviously, a new brand, a new name. Um, and our clients are happy. Um, it seems like when we call the facilities and we call people um, – Actually, you kind of found a nice little blessing in it that um, senior care advocates, we seem to get a little bit more um, favor. And, you know, the people in the industry are saying, well, who are you and what do you do? And gosh, you're the only ones who do it. And um, yeah, so it's an exciting time. Tell me, why is it so critical to, to have an advocate? Good question. So what we're we're finding, and there's actually several reasons for this. The biggest one is that um, to kind of to answer that, to preface that, so the majority of calls that come into our offices um, are people in a crisis, and that means they're way overdue caring for a loved one at home. You know, you got 85 year old mom caring for 87 year old dad, and now you got two patients after a couple years, and they're running out of money, running out of ability because uh, it's so demanding. Or even more so, you've got somebody in the hospital or skilled therapy, and they can't go and return to what their normal was because you know one day it's kind of changed everything and maybe they've fallen had a stroke or another medical issue so what happens is that first of all they can't speak for themselves most of the time you know because they're in a crisis and if the family doesn't have legal documents done and are such that they're current they can't speak for them in many cases in most cases and so what you have is a system that in my opinion is designed mostly for the benefit of the bottom line of the corporations that own the hospitals and the facilities, more so than the betterment of the patient, making all the patient's health decisions. Now, I'm no medical person, uh, but you know you can learn through the years um, what is most of the time best for people, especially if you're given all your options. And what we found is that people aren't getting the care that they require most of the time today they need an advocate so whether it's a son or daughter best friend pastor whoever somebody that can go and speak up for the people <clears throat> because they're not getting all of their rights is what we're finding and they're not being told all their options they're just being told what's best for the person who's providing that care and again it's usually a major corporation more concerned about the bottom line than the patient's care. That's just my opinion, but it's backed with about 35 years of experience. And so I think it's qualified if I can say that. Um, but you have to know your rights. And, um, you know, for instance, in skilled therapy, people get an average of 21 days of therapy, but you have a maximum of 100 that are available if you qualify. Well, there's ways to get people to qualify that aren't being told. So we want to make sure that people get the best care, the right care, um, so they can return home or return to the best, you know, possible situation. So um, as far as, you know, I mean, I've got aging parents, but they're not to that point where they, they, they need help yet. Yet, because, mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. mean, uh, they, are, they are getting up there. What kind of advice would you have for, uh, you know, people in my shoes, you know, in their 30s with, aging parents uh-huh so I think the biggest thing is just to begin the discussion you know 
most of our parents don't want to disclose their assets and, and their income and their plans <clears throat> because it's a private generation for the most part. Um, <clears throat> they've never been a burden to anybody you don't want to be, and especially to your, you know, their children. Yeah. But to open up the conversation and just say, Mom, have, you know, Dad, have you guys thought about this? You know, have you already taken care of it? What plans do you have in place, if any? Because what we know is one day can change everything. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a dad, I have a father who was 71 and still cycling and super healthy, you know, running marathons and had a stroke while on a cruise. He pretty much fully recovered, but then a few years later had a very debilitating stroke and it changed everything and, you know, brought on dementia and then later on Parkinson's. Okay. Um, and so one day does change everything. So you're in a perfect place when there's no need, knock on wood, today yeah. to begin the conversation and just ask, you know, have you thought about it? What are your plans? If you're, uh, <clears throat> one of your parents is a veteran mm -hmm. and they served during a period of conflict, they probably don't even know they have benefits that are available should the need arise. Okay. Uh, and there's other programs and then, you know, things like legal documents to make sure that you're empowered legally mm -hmm. to speak on their behalf and be their advocate should the need come up. Well, and I think, yeah, we, it's kind of like with life insurance, right? It's the same thing. Like, should, should you get it? Well, you never know. <laughs> right? so, um, but actually, actually, you do. If I just may interrupt you, yeah, yeah. I don't sell life insurance. I used to for years, oh, but I, yeah, but I don't anymore. <laughs> it was part of our estate planning, and and we all know that we aren't going to get us get out of this world without dying. Obviously, mm -hmm. so we do know that we could benefit from life insurance, but at the same time, at what age is best to buy it? You know, who knows? And now, kind of a second answer to your question. One of the ways you can pre-plan and to help your folks and, and those that are older is look into things called asset-based long-term care plans. Um, long-term care planning is a pretty vast field. And if you find an expert, if you don't know one, just call our number on the screen. We'll point you in the right direction. But you can put together plans now that will help you stretch your money, you know, get two or three times what you have to pay for long-term care should you need it as opposed to paying the retail rate in a crisis. That's another part of the answer there is that people need to know there's options out there. And again, when you're not in a crisis, it's the best time to do your research. Yeah, yeah. so. Makes sense. Um, what's, what's next uh, for, for you and senior care advocates? Boy, I think um, just to be able to get the word out that people need an advocate, it's the biggest thing, you know, we always talk about in our office, if you were to go into our conference room, we have this huge picture and um, it's just this maze. Mm -hmm. And we call it the long-term care maze and there's little figurines in it, you know, and it's like, how do I get mom to not drive anymore? And you know, did mom take her medications? And you know, why is pg and &E calling? Because mom's always paid her bills. Well, you know, maybe she's paid it twice or she hasn't paid it in three months. Um, things like that, you know, and, and so, um, trying to help people understand that they have options. It mm -hmm. is something that statistically over 85% of the people that are over 80 will need skilled nursing of some type before they pass away. So the, the odds are pretty good. We're going to need some care, right? Yeah. So not quite as high as, you know, actually dying, but they're pretty high. And so to help people understand, you don't have to go through this alone. <clears throat> there are experts we, in the Central Valley. We have incredibly amazing, super committed people uh, that are, you know, in place to help people get the care they need. And, and they're, you know, great, great um, advocates and people that will give you what's best for you, not what's best for their bottom line. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> not everybody does that, of course, but we've identified those people and we know them and we trust them. Mm -hmm. And so we have a great team of people that we have in place because, as you can imagine, in a crisis, you don't want to be having to go yeah. to, you know, to 14 different people to get everything done. Yeah. If you can find somebody you can trust and is known and can produce immediately, because the bottom line is in a crisis, you're paying thousands and thousands. You're, you're too young to know this probably, but 
you know, I would, uh, I would imagine. Uh, let's how, hope so. How ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, expensive. a nursing home average is over twelve grand in the Central Valley right now. A month. That's a you month, know? right? Yeah, statewide, it's a little over ten grand. Wow. So a month. Why is it so high here? A little bit um, higher here, huh? <clears throat> well, I'd like to say because we provide better care. Oh. But um, you know, it is a little crazy uh, in the valley. It's 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 higher than a lot of places, hmm. but. Um, to know their options, you ask, you know, what do we have going forward? Really trying to educate people. We're going to be doing a lot of <clears throat> educational videos and, and short clips and fact sheets. It'll be on our website and be on a truth, for, um, excuse me, on a uh, senior care advocates um, like a YouTube, YouTube channel. Oh, yeah, perfect. you know, okay. that we can do. Um, and um, because people need to know what they don't know, especially in a crisis. You know, we don't charge for VA applications. We believe if a veteran served our country, that ought to be enough. Thank you very much to wow, all the veterans who did serve thank our you for country. Doing that. Wow. Uh, we don't charge for Medi-Cal applications. Huh. Um, you know, we do charge for, you know, the expertise and right. coaching and guidance and taking you through the maze. But in a crisis, our clients are very, very happy to let somebody lead them, right? Yeah. It's kind of like, how do you go through a minefield? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you follow somebody and... Um, yeah, you're so, basically their agent. Exactly. Yeah, and if you understand what an advocate really is, it's a person who speaks on behalf of someone else, you know, um, actually has its roots in the legal system. But um, we're advocates. We know the way, you know, if you don't know how to deal with in-home care or what your options are, we have, we have the information and we know who you can trust. Um, if you aren't getting the VA help and the VA is a, is a terribly difficult process for most people to navigate we know shortcuts you know we've got the experience um and if you're looking for assisted living and and the best way because now maybe care at home isn't really the best option mm -hmm. you know we can point you in the right direction and walk with you through that process and you know the need is huge um it's much more than we can fill uh, but we feel like the the bar that we've set and the way that we help people um nobody else is doing it you know we advocate yeah. the facilities tell us that we're the only ones who go with our clients in and meet with them and advocate for them it's it's really necessary and so we just hope to do a lot more of it we know the need is great and um, yeah lots lots to come absolutely and yeah. um yeah. so basically best way you know somebody's watching this today or on our replay um just reach out to you with questions we have a great team. Yeah, okay. the numbers on the screen. Yeah. You can look, you know, find us at seniorcareadvocate.com. We have great information, a lot of information forthcoming and fact sheets and, like I say, quick educational videos. Because um, when you need to know and you're in a crisis, you need to know. You need to have that right now. You're make, asked to make decisions that are very tough and, and very, um, you know, important. And a lot of times people don't have the chance to really do research. So we're going to bring it to them. And, if, so. you know, and like you said, in a time of crisis, maybe they'll get one quote here and they're like, well, we'll just do it yeah. when they could have, you know, worked with you that and your team that knows, OK, well, let's. Yeah. Some things you need, on. some things you don't need. Right. And yeah. uh, if we can get you through a scary time as quickly as possible, mm -hmm. um, that's really what we want to do. Greg, so. good to see you again. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Have a My good uh, upcoming weekend. I plan on it. You too. Right. I will. Thank you. I'm Austin Reed. Thanks for joining us for Central Valley Talk.